This is a piece of research by Dunlosky et al, published in 2013. In the video, there is a link to all of these, and I've offered you a summary of what the research suggests. In terms of academic research, laboratory settings rather than classroom settings, science, maths, subject types rather than the arts, and more often, if it is a classroom setting, it tends to be secondary rather than primary. Do look at the research in greater detail, see what you can take away, how it can inspire you and your work and your thinking. Here are your nine explicit study skills. Some you'll recognize, some you did yourself when you were at school studying. Some things that we maybe subconsciously do with our students rather than consciously and explicitly teaching them how to do these things. For example, mnemonics, you know, how do you remember the colors of the rainbow? Richard of York gave battle in vain in order to retrieve the letters. You'll be familiar with all these. Please take a look in a little bit more detail. So they're all there. You've got the efficacy. So efficacy means uh, intended for its desired result. And of course, within this itself, you know, whether you're working with a four year old or a 16 year old, there are many different ways that you can help students retrieve. Cognitive scientists that I work with, their best definition I can give you for teachers is to ask students to write it or say it and pull it out of their head. Rather than think about the second planet from the sun, I need you to write it, maybe share it with a friend, then say it or show it to me on a whiteboard is a much more effective and concrete method for ensuring that your students do think about your question. Bottom half are in no particular order. I've highlighted them as yellow. The research says low. Doesn't mean that you should disregard them at all. They do have an impact. Maybe not as beneficial as the others. Again, with caution, thinking more as an academic, a higher impact in what context. Uh, the research looks at lots of uh, established studies. So a meta-analysis is research of already published research, and it gathers it all together and then try to work out if it has a high, medium or low efficacy. I suspect within some of these studies, there'll be one or two that have a really high impact in a particular context, but overall, the research looking at the overall picture suggests low. So uh, we could spend all day on this, but I want to move on. These are your four power tools. Now this is inspired by Pooja Agarwal and Patrice Bain, who produced a wonderful book called Powerful Teaching, their summary of their own retrieval practice academic research in their classrooms. These are a teacher's four power tools, retrieval, space, interleave, and feedback driven. Retrieval, pull it out of kids' heads, write it or say it, space content, so that kind of curriculum sequence, interleaving, think fruit salad, apples, pears, bananas, strawberries, all mixed together, similar categories, rather than an abstract co uh, content, which might be trees, volcanoes, or even baked beans. Although it's a food category, it's a different type of substance within the umbrella of that curriculum material. So when you're mixing your content in a spaced fashion through your curriculum design, it's important to mix similar topics rather than abstract. And then you've got your feedback. In other videos, I'll signpost a link in this video. Feedback, feed up, feed forward, verbal, written, non-verbal. There are many different ways. And obviously we know it needs to be timely. It needs to be manageable for the teacher, meaningful and motivational for the student in order to... Now this is, um, again, from Pooja Agua and Patrice Bain. Their 10 benefits. So within their book, they've got all these headlines. I produced this little graphic. You've got all these in lots of the resources. They've got lots of great resources in their book. I'd really recommend that you check it out. The retention, pretty straightforward. Retransfer of knowledge from short-term memory to long-term developing schema. As a teacher, I can identify what you know or don't know. Uh, pandemic and COVID uh, learning lost. It increases that learning that's lost. So it's a nice, safe way to build up metacognition, self-regulation, uh, and acquisition of knowledge. And what I love bringing all this together, this is my example, so it's not an exclusive do it this way, of how you might look at your curriculum schema work, your curriculum design, alongside where you would teach explicit study skills month by month on a regular basis throughout the academic year. By but year. maybe in year seven in September in a history subject, we will explicitly teach students how to highlight as a study skill 
alongside the teaching of rivers, volcanoes, or a particular unit. Then in October, they get a recap, that skill becomes a little bit more embedded, and then they're introduced to summarization. And you can maybe start to see how each study skill builds on the other to a point where at the end of year seven in history, they are fully aware of all these different study skills. And then in year eight, it becomes more deeply embedded. The strategies that teachers ask students to complete are a bit more detailed and a bit more demanding. And then this is mapped yeah, across the department or the year group and across the school alongside your curriculum design. Imagine that. Now, I haven't seen many schools publish this type of stuff. I know one or two are, but it's not there everywhere. And, and this is a, maybe something that you can look at alongside your curriculum designs to help students develop these study skills as a kind of uh, tool that they need for life in terms of developing that love of learning as well as knowing how to self-regulate their kind of approaches to their studies. And um, I hope it helps.